Hey folks, Johnny Simcoe here, and in this little tutorial I'd like to show you how to batch process a bunch of image file formats into one format, such as a JPEG file. So if you have a bunch of images that are, you know, JPEGs and RAW files and PSD files and Illustrator files, is there an easy way of getting them to be a bunch of JPEG files and let's talk about how we can resize those images. So if you have to send them to a client through email and they're too big to send, we can scale them down. Or if you're putting them on social media and they're too big, or perhaps uh, you're putting them through a WordPress website and you know the files are just ginormous and they're eating up a lot of bandwidth for download times. You know how can we take a bunch of images and very quickly and painlessly uh, scale them down? So I've got a couple of techniques uh, I'd like to share with you now. So I'm in the Adobe Bridge and I've got a couple of photographs. A couple of these photos are TIFF files and a few of them are JPEG files. They all are pretty high resolution. You know, this one's 3200 by 4000. You know, this one's 2000 by roughly 3000. So they're all, you know, good size files right here, pretty big images. And I'd like to really shrink them down to something that's probably a little more, you know, web or mobile friendly. I'd like to get them down to roughly, you know, for lack of argument, about 800 pixels or so. So I'm going to select all these images. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the aperture icon up here in the bridge. That's going to bring me to the camera raw editor. And this technique will work with JPEGs, it'll work with TIFFs, and it will work with all types of raw files. Basically any file that can open in the raw editor, you can apply this process to. But not every file is compatible with the camera raw editor, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So again, I've got my TIFFs and JPEGs. I'm going to hit Command A to select all the images in the film strip. I'm going to hit Save Images. Uh, let's select a folder to put these in. Uh, this is my original folder. Let's just make a new folder to keep it clean. We'll call it My JPEGs. You know, actually, let's call it Small JPEGs. That would make more sense because that's what we're making, smaller JPEGs. Okay, create that folder, select it. Now, uh, the format is going to be JPEG file. The quality, you know, the maximum quality with the least amount of compression is a 12. But again, if you're doing it for the web, an 8's fine. That will take a little bit of data weight uh, off the files, which is pretty great. Down here, you have an option to resize. So I use width and height, and then you can enter the maximum width and height of the image. So I'm going to do 800 by 800, which means because the photo I currently have in the background is in portrait orientation, the maximum height will be 800, and then the width is going to be less than that. So I'm going to guess the width is probably going to be at about 600 or so, 550 pixels, 600, something like that. Uh, if the image is in landscape orientation, then the width will be 800, and the height will go to whatever number it needs to go to, 400, 600, something like that. The resolution, I'm going to keep it 72, and I like to turn on uh, shop in for screen and just use standard. What this does, and a lot of people don't realize this until they really stare at their images for a long time, when you scale down photos, they get a little soft. All the interpolation of throwing out the pixels sometimes softens the image just a little bit. And a lot of times you don't pick it up unless you're really sort of intimate with that photograph. So I usually turn on shop in for screen that's going to uh, sharpen this image up just a little bit as it scales it down. It's, it's just going to look a little nicer. So I'm all set with that and I'm going to hit the save button. And now when I hit done and go back into the bridge, there's my small JPEG folder. If I open it up, here are my images. And if I look at the metadata, uh, let's take a look at that first one. Uh, yeah, 800 pixels, maximum height. And yeah, I was pretty close. I said about 530 to 600 pixels. I was pretty darn close. Uh, so the width of it is 531. And if I go to the portrait orientation, the width is 800 pixels by 530 pixels. So these have been greatly reduced and their file size has dropped down quite a bit. These are, if I quickly look at the metadata at the bottom, they're about, give or they're about 200K. They average in about 200K or so, which is different than the several megabytes they were uh, earlier. So that works in the Camera Raw editor. What happens if I have files that don't open in the Camera Raw editor, like Photoshop files? Well, let's see. As luck would have it, I have a folder of images in some other sort of graphic uh, components here that are PSD files. 
And I also have this AI file just to see if I can mess things up a little bit. So I get a good little mix going on here. I'm going to hit Command A to select all. I'm going to go up to the Tools menu here in the bridge. I'm going to go Photoshop Image Processor. That's going to go ahead and launch Photoshop. And I'm going to get a dialog box that is kind of similar to what we had in the Camera Raw Processor. So first, I'm going to turn on under Step 2 here, Save in Same Location. What that will do is that's automatically going to make a JPEG folder for me and save the files in my current folder where these images are, but it's going to make a subdirectory, a JPEG folder for me and put the JPEGs in there. You can then save these images as a JPEG file, a PSD file, or as TIFF files. And again, we're just going to stick to making them JPEGs. Same deal, I'm going to keep the quality on 8 and you know we'll do the width and height at 800. This will behave just like it did in the Camera Raw Editor. Now just a quick side note, if for some reason I did want to save these as TIFF files, for example, I could turn this on, uh, change the sizing dimensions on those, and when it saves it, when it does the batch process, it will actually make two subfolders for me, one with JPEGs and one with TIFFs. So it actually organizes it a little bit for you, which is kind of convenient. Uh, so that is all set to go, and I'm going to hit uh, Run. You might see these images open very quickly in Photoshop, depending on how fast your computer is. And when I go back into the bridge, there is my JPEG folder. If I open it up, there are my images. All those PSDs were now converted to JPEGs, and even the AI file got made into a JPEG file. And it took on a white background because it flattened the alpha channel of the original AI file, which is what happens when you have an alpha channel and save it as a JPEG. So that worked out really well. Now there's one thing that wasn't available when I processed these photos through Photoshop versus going through the raw editor. Do you remember how we sharpened the images when they got scaled down? That wasn't an option when we did this second batch process through Photoshop, but you can make that happen with a really simple workaround. So I'm going to go into Photoshop, I'm going to make a new document. It doesn't matter what it is, we just got to get a new document on the screen. Just a flat white document will be sufficient. And I'm going to build an action recording me doing the sharpen command. And then when I batch process the images again, I can apply that action as part of the batch process. So I'm going to go under Window, I'm going to go to Actions, and we're going to make a new action here. I'll hit the New button, and we're going to call this basic, well, let's spell this right, sharpen. Okay, um, that's all good. I'm going to hit record. I'm going to go filter, sharpen, sharpen. Usually I do an unsharp mask, but these images are so low res, they only need a fine amount of sharpening. So I'm just going to do sharpen. That usually does the trick. And then I'm going to stop the action. So it just recorded me uh, Photoshop just recorded me doing that sharpening command and it actually sharpened the white document you just can't tell because it's white but the command has been recorded. I'm gonna close this out don't need to save it and back in the bridge I'm gonna go back to my original PSD files and let's just load some of these up whoops we don't want to grab all of them I don't want the folder we're gonna to go tools Photoshop image processor all the uh, settings that I had previously are still here, which is actually kind of nice. If you've got a bunch of folders you're doing and you want it all the same, it does remember uh, the last settings you had in here. Uh, and the only thing I'm going to add to this is at the end of this, I'm going to run an action. And I should have, here it is, basic sharpen. And after this, I would hit the run button, let it process again, and there you'd have it. You'd have your images scaled down and sharpened up a little bit. So I hope at the end of the day this can save you a lot of file open and file save as commands and help speed up your workflow.